Hello there, Road to Indy race fans. How are you? My name is Rob Howden, the voice of the Road to Indy, presented by Cooper Tires and the Road to Indy Insider. Thanks for joining us here on my uh, IG page. Great to have you. Uh, we've been working our way through the Road to Indy paddock, as you all know. We've uh, had a chance to talk to a lot of drivers so far, uh, working to Toby Sowery, David Malukas, Peanut Butter and Jelly, both Colin Kaminsky and Hunter McElray. Uh, we talked to Parker Thompson, Robert McGinnis. Just keep going through the order of guys we've had a chance to talk to. Cameron Shields was our most recent one. Get ready to start today's show. Shout out to Diane Swintel from the Road to Indy PR staff. Uh, give me a little high rod there. I love it. The Grace and Eve's coming on. Ben Varner, great to see where you guys are coming in from. And, and always, always good to see it. Uh, today, let's wait for today. Friday. I'm going to have from D-Force Racing, Corey Enders. He's going to join me uh, on Friday. I haven't, we haven't picked the time yet. Probably, I mean, maybe 1 o'clock. I like to go a little earlier on Friday because I don't really want to be working that late on a Friday if I can hang out a little bit. Um, so Corey's going to join us. But today, a brand new driver on the road dandy presented by Cooper Tires, a rookie in the USF 2000 program. Uh, it is going to be Max Kayser joining me today, which is awesome. I'm not, not sure if I've seen Max come on here yet. We'll wait for him to jump on board. Uh, gives me the opportunity, of course, then to talk about upcoming uh, the race on Saturday. It'll be the final round of the Rick Motek Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires uh, E-Series. We're going to be racing at um, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Much different than Road America. Lots of opportunities to pass, of course, at the... Uh, uh, at the Mid Ohio Sports, I mean, at Road America, not so much at Mid Ohio. I think Mid Ohio is going to be a wild one because uh, it's tight, as we know, down the end of the straightaway, one of the primary uh, passing opportunities. And we have a championship battle between Philippe Dennis and Eduardo Barrichello, the only two drivers mathematically able to win the championship here. We are hearing word that we could be starting a second season. Maybe a, we'll call it a spring summer series. Uh, I love the idea of that. So we potentially will be able to have another run. Cross our fingers that we might be able to get the new car. We're obviously using the Pro Mazda right now, which has been on the iRacing platform for many, many years. Uh, they have are, are working on or almost completed with the uh, the USF 17 and the PM 18, two cars that will come available on iRacing at least this summer sometime. Hopefully, we'll have it before we get started. As you all know, we're crossing our fingers and hoping to get back to the first race of the season, which would be late June at Road America. Okay, now all of us are, of course, watching all the, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, the trends we're seeing with the COVID-19 coronavirus. We hope you're staying home, staying safe, staying healthy, washing your hands, wearing gloves when you have to, ordering food in, whatever it may be. I did an express grocery pickup where I ordered online and went, went and grabbed it there, so that was fantastic. Um, masks as well. Make sure you get, make sure, well, you know what, take care of yourself, wear a mask. It helps yourself and helps everybody else as well. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if we have Max on here yet. I don't. There he is right there. Let's get doing it. Let's get this guy. All right, we'll bring Max Kayser on here. Let him come on. Uh, First-year driver running for Mil uh, Miller Vinatieri Motorsports here in, uh, in 2020. We're connect. There he is right there. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me okay, Max? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so first and foremost, this is your first Road to Indy interview, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, I like it. Hey, listen, uh, great to have you with us, obviously. Excited for the new season. One of the things we start out with here, because we're trying to introduce you as a younger driver coming into the Road to Indy, trying to introduce you to all the, uh, the people that are, you know, follow this Road to Indy because they know that these, you guys are going to be the future stars of the NTT IndyCar Series. First off, you are 16 years of age, right? Yes. Living in Colorado, born in Ohio, but you live in Colorado. That's where you did your, your racing. Tell me your origin story. How, how did you start racing cars? First carts. I know you raced carts first. Did, was your family into racing? What, what was it that got you into go-kart racing? Well, my dad was big into racing. So, like, it just started with me probably watching racing on TV. And, yeah. Like, we eventually went to a track, and I really wanted to try it. So, I started when I was four with cars. Wow. Seriously? Four? Yeah. Where, now, where, were you that in Colorado? No, that was in Ohio. Okay, how? Where, so where did you first start? Remember, I'm a, I'm a go kart guy, as you know. Where did you first start? Well, the first place I went was uh, G and J Cartway in Camden, Ohio. There, legendary. So that's so where I started. Me, so tell me about your early early karting career. You started obviously when you were young. Uh, how fast did you get up to speed? Did you jump right into racing? Were you doing kid karts? Did you get into the junior cat or the the cadet categories first? No, I started with kid karts. Uh, okay. First, it was just like running locally there, but yeah. then we started branching off and doing regional stuff and then eventually national stuff. 
So when you went to the national level, uh, the competition obviously stepping up. Did, uh, who, what, what team were you running with, or was it more of a family effort? It was more of a family effort when we first started. But I love that. Out of the back of the pickup truck, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you're in Ohio. When did you move to Colorado? Because when you jumped from carts to cars, you, uh, you did that in Colorado, correct? Yes, I did that in Colorado. So I moved here in 2015, so five years ago now. Did you do any karting in Colorado while you were there first? I did a little bit of karting in Colorado, okay. but it wasn't long after that I jumped to cars. So you, now you, when you jumped to cars, now tell me first where you went. Where did you go to get your, your license? Did you go to a three-day school somewhere? Uh, I went to the Lucas Oil Race School, and I actually did that back in Kentucky at the Corvette Museum track. What do you think of that track? Do you like it? Well, it was pretty new back then, so it was, yeah. really, yeah. It was really smooth, really nice. So you, so you did your school at, at, the, at the Lucas Oil School of Racing, which is awesome. Of course, one of the official partners of the Road to Indy. But then you jumped into, like, what, my favorite kind of development level. You ran Formula F, which is Formula Ford or the F now. Because did you, run the, did you have the, the Ford motor or were you running a Honda? I was running the Ford motor. You were on a Ford. Okay, so tell me about a couple of years because you did really well. Rookie of the year the first year in the, in the Colorado region, the Rocky Mountain region. For, what team did you run with? Was it a family team again? And what kind of, what kind of car did you drive? I, I love hearing which Formula Ford you were driving because I'm a big Formula Ford fan. When we was running Formula Ford, it was, it was a family thing that we were doing. So nice. we just bought the trailer to the track and mainly worked on it here in the garage. But I was That's actually awesome. running a 1989 Euro Swift. That's what I was driving. Wow. That's almost a vintage car now. <laughs> yeah, almost. So, t so tell me about driving that because I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, what, what it takes to drive a car like that. And they, they think, you know, you're out there, you're banging around 130 horsepower, whatever, whatever they are nowadays. Uh, but people don't realize to be fast in a Formula Ford, it's all about car control, right? Because there's no downforce. You're sliding the car around a lot. Uh, talk about making the transition from karting into the Formula Ford. Was it, did you find it was an easy transition for you? I found that the transition from carrying the Formula Ford wasn't like too hard because, I mean, it was the same concepts, especially yeah. not having wings or anything. I think yeah. the hardest part was just getting used to shifting. <laughs> well, how old were you when you were driving? I was, well, I started in that car when in I was- In the car. 15. Yeah, so you would yeah. never even driven a car before yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so in Colorado, obviously you did really well there. Uh, what was your favorite track you drove coming up the ranks there through Colorado and Formula Ford? High Plains Raceway, which is oh, yeah. just just east of Colorado. It's a really fun track. Lots of elevation changes. It's really definitely one of my favorite tracks to go to. All right. So tell me then about the transition because you go from – this is the wild thing. You go from karting, two years in Formula Ford. You're only 16 years of age now, and then you jump behind the wheel of the Tatus USF-17 into a, into a USF-2000 car. A lot more horsepower. You've got downforce, bigger brakes, bigger tires. What was? Tell me about the first of all. Tell me the, how you felt emotionally with the experience the first time. How great it was, and then tell me about the transition. Have you had? Has it been tough for you to tra transition to having more aerodynamics? First, start with how you felt about it. Well, I mean, when I first tested, which was last year at Autobahn, yeah. like it was a real eye opener because, I mean, the power response was so much more, and I mean the grip that it gave you, it was just incredible compared to my car. That's it. Yeah. So when you, so then you go testing, how was the transition for you? Did you like, so you, how much testing did you, did, did you do in the off season? Well, uh, last year I did a two day test at Audubon. And then I, after that, I went to the Chris Griffiths at Indy. Okay. So that's how much I did last year, but the and then, transition and, yeah. was, I mean, it was a little bit difficult just cause I had to get used to like the extra grip the wings gave, like rolling more speed and stuff. But I was going to say it's it's more about trusting the car, isn't it? Because yeah. you know how to get you know how to get around the racetrack. Obviously, you ran Formula Ford, so you know the line. You know what you're supposed to do. But when you're trying to carry that much more speed to another corner, you have to trust them in, in, in the brakes. You have to trust in the in the aerodynamics. Well, that must have been a little bit tough. I know I know that when I've done it, uh, it's been a while for me to kind of get a feel like I'm not going to spin the car around, right? Yeah, I mean, just trusting the car. You have to trust like in things that aren't directly in your control, like. All you had to really do was steer the car in the Ford. I mean, steer and use your feet to move it. But. Yeah, a little throttle response, right? A little throttle steer. Yeah. Now, okay, so he, then here's an interesting thing, because we talked about the fact that coming through karting, you guys were a family team. Even in Formula Ford, you guys were a family team. You jump now into Miller Venetary Motorsports, so not only are you going from a Formula Ford into a much powerful, more downforce car, 
you're also coming into the team dynamic, you know, the having having engineers and the staff and the big the big trailer and everything. Was that uh, was that a little bit intimidating for you to to make that jump in there, or did you feel like you got along with Jack William and the crew pretty quick? I mean, they made it. I mean, Jack, J. Rob, Chris, and Jack, they all made it extremely good experience there. I cool. mean, they made me feel comfortable there. So, I mean, it wasn't too hard to get used to being with a real team. I mean, I feel perfectly comfortable there now. I love it. So, tell, like, okay, so we were in St. Petersburg. We were all ready to go racing, right? We all wanted to get the season underway. You were going to get five sessions on the weekend with practice, two qualifying, and two races. You get to get one session, then we have to go home. Uh, St. Petersburg, number one, sketchy as it is. You guys are the first guys on the racetrack, right? So it's going to be dusty as heck out there. Um, how was your session? Let's talk about your session. How was it? And how did it feel to be at a big time race like that? No one, all the IndyCar guys were there. Indy Pro 2000 is there, the whole staff, Indy Lights. Everybody's there. You're getting ready to go. How did you feel coming into that event? I mean, it, it felt like a pretty big deal. But <laughs> like in that first session, I was just trying to like get a feel for the track, yeah. not, not do anything stupid, just like feel for the track. Cause I mean, it was, it was quite dusty in that first session, like you said. So the track wasn't going to be super fast then anyways. So you go out of pit lane, you go around, tell me your first lap at speed coming through turns two, three, and four. Cause all of a sudden you're down this, you know, you're down this big, huge wide, uh, it, that, but the, the airport, right? The runway, you're like, Oh, this is all great. And then you go into turn two and all of a sudden everything closes in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it was, it was pretty crazy. Cause I mean, it, the wall can't, comes at you pretty fast. Yeah, it's that narrow because it's a lot narrower than anything I've ever driven. Yeah, no doubt. Any track I've ever driven that. But the biggest thing I noticed was like the crowning the road, like how you can be you're tilted one way up <laughs> when you're in one side of the track and you're tilted the other way on the other side. And, and wait till it's wet, right? Because then you're obviously off camber when it's wet. Now let's talk about the uh, the road to Indy E series because you've been really good out of the gate. I want to know. I want to know if you're like a regular. I race or what? Because when I'm calling these races, inevitably we're talking about you. You qualified really well. You had good. You had good pace. You've had bad luck for sure. You've been taken out a couple times. But is that something you did before coming in doing some I racing? Uh, really, I mean, I just started getting to I racing a lot. I mean, at the start of this year, at the start okay. of 2020, I had I had it for a while, but I haven't really like used it a whole lot. But now that it ha it has all like the big time tracks on it, so now that I've been doing USF like. It has all the tracks that were running, so I use it a lot to practice for Homestead. Unfortunately, there's nothing really I can do for St. Pete. So sure. Well, and, to... and saying that, so, again, we're waiting, right, to get to Road America. You had a chance, of course, to test for Road America uh, when, when we raced that. We did the race last weekend. Is that something – are you focusing on doing Road America and running Mid-Ohio as much as you can and running Laguna Seca as much as you can? Are you doing some of that? Have you tried Lucas Oil Raceway with it yet? I actually have tried Lucas. The Oval? <laughs> so do you, mean, do, you, do you think it's going to give you an advantage? Or maybe is it, going to, is it going to speed up your learning curve a little bit? I mean, I think it just speeds up the learning curve because I don't, I don't really get the feel out of it because, I mean, you're just looking at a screen. Yeah. But being able to know where things on the track are, your reference points, that's what I like to use the sim for. So. What are your expectations for this coming weekend? We're running mid-Ohio. It's, it's a tough racetrack. As I said, you've shown pretty good speed. Uh, are you thinking top 10? What are you thinking for this next race? I'm hoping for a top 10. I just got to make sure I stay out of trouble because it's going to be, it's going to be pretty hectic because in practice yesterday, it was pretty close with everyone. It's a, not as many places to pass. So I'm sure people are going to be getting desperate to get an opportunity to get down the inside of someone. Yeah, I think I, I think I agree. And it seems to me like everybody's, you know, all the guys that maybe hadn't been on iRacing racing before, have gotten more seat time. So, like, everybody's kind of coming together right now, right? It's not, it's not as spread out as it was. And this track is super tough. Hopefully, we'll have another season, uh, another five-race season before we go in June at, at Road America. Uh, so, maybe top ten this weekend? What do you think? Is that, is, that a, is that a good expectation for you? I think it's a pretty reasonable expectation okay. if I just stay clean and stay out of trouble. Because, I mean, when I, when I haven't gotten into trouble and done something that's caused me to go back, I've been staying pretty much around the top 10. So that's what I'm saying. You've been great. All right. So let's cap off the virtual world. Let's go back to the real world and we'll finish up our interview here. You look at the schedule we have right now. You've you ran a bunch of races, all, all your races in Colorado. Obviously you've tested at a track. You've been on the road course in Indianapolis. You've done the testing at Homestead. Is there another track on the road to Indy, the actual real track that we're going to race on that you're really looking forward to getting to for the first time this year? I'm actually really looking forward to Portland because last year, we were planning to run Portland, so we took okay. the 
car all the way out to Portland to test, but it didn't end up coming together. But I liked it when I was there. It's a really fast track. I believe that's the first time I met you, too. Weren't we, I think I met you coming over the bridge, did I not? Yeah, I did meet you in Portland. <laughs> that's right. You were, were going to run. So, so looking forward to Portland. That's right. I like that track. It's a legendary track for sure. What about something like uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca? Are you thinking about that one, too? I mean, I'm thinking about that one, but the biggest track I've been thinking about is Mid-Ohio because, I mean, having been there before, it's, yeah. a, it's a track I'm really excited for, especially with all the elevation changes, the ups and downs. It's really – it's a really fun track. I'm sure it'll be. It's fun in the in i racing, so it's going to be even better in real life. I totally agree. All right, let's cap things off right now. When we go back to racing for Max Kayser, what is the what is what is your expectation? What's a good season for you? How many do you need? Some top tens? You know, you, know, you never want to put too much pressure on yourself. You're young. What's what's a what's a good season look like for you? Where, where do you finish? I'm looking for to obviously have some top tens, be up there, to you know have some good pace. But if I can just stay consistently in the top tens, that'll be that'll be a good first season. Because you obviously want to be up at the very front, but you need to put some realistic expectations on yourself as well. Well, I always believe when you do that, when you have the realistic expectations, you don't get yourself in trouble. You don't put too much pressure on yourself because you know what you're focusing for. And then when that perfect weekend comes together, you're ready to take advantage of whatever happens. Right? You find yourself on the podium, or you never know. You could get a race win. That's for sure. So. Uh, listen, I, I appreciate you joining me. I know you guys have been practicing already for Mid-Ohio. Keep practicing. I want to see you in the top 10. I expect to be talking about you a lot on Saturday. Okay, I will. All right. All right, Max. Thank you for, for joining me, buddy. I appreciate it. Okay. See right. ya. Great interview, folks, there. Young driver just coming onto the, onto the road to Indy scene. I love the Formula Ford experience. <laughs> An 89 Euro Swift. Yes. I like the old school car. That was awesome. Great job for Max Kayser. It's first ever interview here on the road to Indy. I think I'm going to be talking with this kid quite a bit over the next number of years. Like I said, he looked really good on the sim racing program. He was right there, as he said, just inside, outside the top 10. A couple mistakes. Got wrecked by a couple of people. That happens for sure as well. I think you'll see him in the top 10 at Mid-Ohio, especially with the fact that he's all jacked up for that, uh, that track when we get actually racing as well. Good job there from, from, from Max again. He'll run with Miller Vinatieri Motorsports, I believe the number 41 machine, the red 41 this year. Uh, again, a rookie in the road to Indy. It's interesting because the season, of course, you know, getting a little shortened. We have St. Petersburg now at the end. It actually may help some of the younger drivers because there's not going to be the big gaps that we have. There are times where we have a month gap where a driver's not able to get back behind the car again. So if we push things together, it's for the guys that are new, they're going to get back on the track more and more. So that may play uh, to some of the younger drivers coming up quicker because normally what we see, a rookie driver, they'll get faster and faster. It's almost Road America in June when they really start making that breakout. We see the young guys break out and get their first top 10s, first top five, sometimes first wins at Road America because they've had the start of the season, right? They've had the race at St. Petersburg. We've gone to Barber in the past. They've run the road course race at, uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They've been on the Oval at Lucas Oil Raceway, which really changes drivers because it really, you have to be able to hustle the car and trust the car when you're on the Oval. You're trusting what the engineers have done to the car because if you don't trust them, you're slow. You have to show the trust in the car. When they come out of that race, it's three or four weeks later when we go to Road America, they're just that much better. They're, they're that much more mature and confident. And they have some momentum. So uh, if we push everything together, I think it should be interesting to see how the young guys do. Max is a good kid. Can't wait to see him drive this year. He'll be racing this weekend in the Rick Motech Road to Indy E-Series. Remember, you can watch that on all the platforms, all the Facebook pages, YouTube, uh, Cooper Tires Facebook page as well. Road to Indy TV will be streaming it. I think Apex Racing TV streams it as well on, on the YouTube channel. Uh, I look forward to joining my, my good friend now, Jonathan. Uh, uh, Jonathan's going to join me. Uh, he's from down in Australia, Jonathan Simone, top line, uh, iRacing commentator and a driver too. So I'm more of the color analyst. I'm not the driver analyst. I go back to Jonathan when we, we want to talk about uh, talk about how good the cars are because he knows how to hustle them around in iRacing. I'm pretty much an old school hack on there right now trying to fix my licenses up. Anyways, big thank you to Max Kayser for joining me uh, here from Mil Miller Vinatieri Motorsports out in Colorado is where he is right now, taking care of himself, staying at home. Uh, again, look forward to Corey Enders joining me on Friday. It'll be a four o'clock start. I think, yeah, four o'clock today. I think we'll go four o'clock with, uh, with Corey Enders as well. That way we can, uh, we can both focus on getting the weekend started or getting back to testing because I'll be setting things up and being ready to go with the commentary. Uh, when we get back at it on uh, at 12.45 on Saturday for the final round of this first E-Series of 2020. Hopefully we'll do some more racing with the E-Series program, but really, 
I want to get back outside, which everybody else does as well. Thank you for joining me here so far, folks. I appreciate it. It is, uh, what are we, Wednesday? It's hump day, April 22nd. Take care of yourself. Book it.